What's up, y'all? So today I'm going to give you a tour of my Scorpion collection. In front of you is the main shelf with all of my displays, some tubs, and beside it is mostly Scorpions I produced and I'm raising up. And these are mostly babies. And below that is a bunch of random spiders. And over here, I got a bunch of random tarantulas and invertebrates. So let's look at some animals. First up is my Tataya Stigmaris Communal. I got these guys housed in a Zilla microhabitat. This is the large one, arboreal style. I don't know how many are in here. I'll say it's like less than 10. These are the baby Tataya's. good and just for the sake of it I keep a few of them separate just in case up next is the beautiful Tataya Smith eye so I got two of these now and I lost five of them so that sucks but it's life so I'm pretty sure this one is a female because she is smaller. They were all the same size when I got them and I feed them at the same time. You can see this one is slightly larger. Beautiful species. All right, up next we got some um, Australian dwarf wood scorpions. So these, these guys are, or well, these girls, are parthenogenic so that means they can have babies without mating there's a third one yeah this one looks like she's about to have babies any day now so that would be cool and they're super communal to me they look like mini flat rock scorpions All right, so this is my Lassiodora parahabana, the salmon pink bird eater. I had this spider the longest of any animal in my collection right now, including snakes. Uh, she was the first animal I got when I got out of the Marine Corps. So she wasn't the first animal I owned, but you know, being in the military, we couldn't have animals. So yeah, that was a point where I had to give up keeping animals and this is the first one I got when I got out. I was in 2016 and she is still here, still kicking. She was an adult when I got her, so um, yeah, I'm not sure how much time she got left. So in here is my Scalipendra polymorpha. This is a blue tiger centipede. I doubt it's gonna come out. Nah. Oh well, yeah, this is a desert species. I mean, um, yeah, it's a desert species and they come in all different forms, a bunch of different colors and uh, blue is one of them and they look really amazing. All right, this is a Lassiodora Kluge. This is the Bahia. Was a Bahia Scarlet Bird Eater. I had her since 2017. Um, I got her as a tiny sling. Like she was like didn't even have hair on her. She was very tiny.
And she's got some dust. Well, it's just sand on her from me. Sprinkling in some sand on here. She'll be fine. There's nothing wrong with her. These are my Androctonus bicolor. These are black fat tail scorpions. I actually bought three of these. This, this is two males. And my female, she passed away on the third day. Y'all don't know what that was about. But um, y'all yeah, probably end up getting some more in the future. Because I like them. And I'm definitely going to try breeding them. So this one's a recent addition. This is the Egyptian green scorpion. This is probably one of the most reactive scorpions. Let's see. See it? It just stings immediately. They are medically significant. Um, the color is, is nice. It's like a yellow with like a, a green tint to it. They're cool little scorpions. And here is my black death stalker. There it is. Probably gonna molt soon. They stop eating. But these desert scorpions, they grow slow. All right, next up we got my, um, I had a brain fart. What is it? <laughs> it's a peach earth tiger. The P. Rufus. Yeah. <laughs> and then beside her is my rear horn baboon. So I'm actually sure all of these, these two are female. So I've had them for a while. They've molted quite a few times. There's my OBT. I don't know if it's a male or female. This is a random spider. This is a um, desert funnel web, funnel weaver, or desert grass spider. Um, I actually had a female I found outside my door. I brought her in because it was cold outside and she ended up having an egg sac and it hatched and I've been raising up some of the babies and they're actually pretty cool. They web up like crazy and their takedowns are really nice. Up next we have the Desert Harry. This is the Arizonensis, but this is the more common subspecies. So I find that these are actually more chill and they can actually be handled. This is probably one of my favorite species. Um, they're great for, they're great for you if you're a beginner or if you just don't want something that is going to put you in the hospital. This is great. And they also get pretty big. So, I mean, it's a, it's a decent scorpion, in my opinion. I have two of these of this locality. And this is the setup for the other one. It's in an acrylic enclosure. So up next, got another subspecies of Desert Harry. This is the Hadrulus paulitus. Paulitas. So you can see on these, the it's actually a lighter colored scorpion, and then there's like a black mask over the eyes. So this subspecies is supposedly a little um a little less common than the Arizonensis, which is what I just showed. Um, some people say this one is less uh, defensive, but 
I have a few more individuals that are not this chill, even the babies. So um, I think that the the black backed, the Arizonensis, I think they're a little bit more easier to handle than these. In these enclosures, I just have some more Acrurus polytus. This one in there. This place. So I built a little burrow. I might put more substrate for this one. Up next, I got a dwarf scorpion from South America. This is the Bothriurus or Bothria species. I'm not sure what um, the exact species is. And you can see how how tiny they are. Um, for care, it's just similar to like a Asian forward scorpion or emperor. It's really basic. Um, it hides a lot. I never see it. So, yeah, this is another scorpion where you pretty much gotta be an enthusiast to enjoy this one, cause you'll never see it. And these are my sand devil scorpions. Tiny, fast. They're cool. I think, I think this one is a female. And this one might be a male. I'm not sure, I'm just guessing. But these are cool, cool little scorpions. You can find them on the west coast of America. So up next is my Asian forest scorpion. This is a heterometris. I don't know, I only know the genus again, not the species. So these can be handled. You could get fooled into thinking they're defensive, but once you uh, once you pick them up or get them onto your hand, they're not that bad. This is sold to me as an Arizona bark scorpion. This is a female, for sure. You got a short tail and a thick body. Pretty little scorpion. All right, up next is my baby vinegar rune. Cool little bug. It's like an alien, huh? Yeah, we got a long time together. This thing is tiny. And this enclosure is a Solomon Island giant black centipede. What's well, a baby? Yeah, so um, apparently these are not very common in the hobby. Um, 
and there's actually not a lot of information on them supposedly or in science and um the the bite from these is really nasty i don't think it'll kill you but you'll definitely be in the world of hurt so yeah i'm not even gonna try to say the scientific name So this is my little, um, I actually don't know what species this is, but I narrowed it down to either Androctonus amorexi or the Buthacus occidentalis, which is the Egyptian scorpion, Egyptian gold. Um, it's one of them. Either way, I don't touch it. And I'm hoping it's grab it. But it looks more like the um, Androctonus to me. So here we have my Androctonus australis, my little group. This little baby right here is her offspring. So from that video, this one is still going. It hasn't molted yet, but it's still eating, still alive. So I'll keep you guys updated on that. If you didn't know, this was the only baby to survive from her brood. This was labeled Doom Scorpion, but it looks like a a desert hairy to me. I'm pretty sure it's a desert hairy. It's 100%. Because doom scorpions have um, they have larger pedipalps, and then their tail is a lot thinner than this one's. This is definitely a desert hairy. You can even see the the same marking like on the polytus. I'm not sure what cell species this is. Um, this is probably caught here in California. But it's one of my favorites, too. I like this one. It's really feisty. This Death Stalker still hasn't molted. Amazing. Up next are the Florida Bark Scorpions. So these are the parents. This one's the female and the male is up here. Here are some of the offspring of those parents. You see they're highly variable. Some of them are two-tone. This one's getting away. Call it black. Up next, we got the Congo Emperor Scorpions. So these are all their setups. My adult female. Hoping she's grabbed it. This one looks like a male. Maybe a sub adult. And this little one hiding away. Dang. So a lot of the babies that she had, I actually traded them. Kind of regret it, but at the same time, other people have captive born babies now. So that's a good thing. But I hope she gives me some more babies. She stopped eating, so we'll see what happens. In this enclosure, I have some millipedes. Um, this one, 
I actually just found this one outside. And these are ghost millipedes. I don't know, I like millipedes a lot. There's three in three of these in here. Only one of those. This one molted. And there's a bunch of baby isopods and springtails in here. This enclosure is my cleanup crew. So I have dubia roaches, a bunch of isopods, um, and some some beetles were in here, but I don't know. I don't know where they are. But yeah, this is my cleanup crew. I'm also breeding these, these dwarf white isopods. So I add all of these into my enclosure. These and these. But these orange ones will actually eat your baby arachnids. So I would be careful. I only put the orange ones with my adults and stuff. I try not to keep orange ones with the baby arachnids. I've had them eat my spiders while they were molting. Well, last but certainly not least, we have my Central American bark scorpions. I literally have hundreds of these. I'm not going to put them all. I just picked out a few so this female is the last of my wild caught adults i started out with seven there were five females and two males and she is the last one left alive so that female produced this female so her generation and her generation has been producing these babies. I'm raising these up in the communal, but I do have some separated. These guys are highly cannibalistic, even as adults. In this enclosure, I only have um, an adult pair. There's some babies scattered around, but they'll disappear over time. Um, even the adults will cannibalize each other, so um, give them space. Plenty of hides and keep them fed and that'll be your best um, way of preventing cannibalism but yeah that was my collection of scorpions and other invertebrates I hope you guys enjoyed that video and thank you for your support thank you for watching